Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Miss Lisa, and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about everything I want to science and math. And this playlist is for students at East Paulding High School in chemistry class. So if you're not looking at the right playlist, go find the right one. And if you are in my class um, and, and you're out today, then you will go on Canvas. You can find the notes there, and then you can watch the video and fill them out. So this is how you do your makeup assignment, but also it's a great way to study. You can just w watch or listen to the notes again, and it can help you um, study. It's a good way of study. So we're gonna start off kind of easy. I try to front load you with A's on your summatives so that later on, when you fail something, you can still get an A out of the class. That's nice of me, isn't it? I'm so nice. All right, so these are our notes uh, that we're gonna be doing, and our standard where that we're starting with is standard one, but really all we're doing is the very beginning of it. It says to obtain, evaluate, and communicate information about the use of modern atomic theory. So um, we have to learn how scientists communicate, and how they do that is through measurements. Let's see if I turn this off again, if it makes it better. If it makes it better. Let's see how it looks on TV. It looks great. And so anyway, I have to say that I'm Miss Lisa because that's my YouTube channel. Because I had my YouTube channel before I had my job here. And the students I tutored didn't call me Mrs. Blackburn. They called me Miss Lisa. So the, the, the YouTube channel is older than my job here because I was tutoring all these other kids. And when COVID hit, I had to, instead of doing Facebook Live, I switched everything over to YouTube because Facebook would delete the videos after a while. I needed the kids to be able to still get to the videos. So I have videos that are designed, especially for homeschoolers who are taking, um, who are doing science and math. So that's how I got started with all that as I was tutoring homeschoolers. All right. So, what do you think is the study of substances and the changes they undergo? Uh-oh, why is this not doing the right thing? Oh, it's because this board is weird. You can't just touch it. We'll see how, this might not actually work, but that's okay, I got a plan B. We want to be able to draw. That one's fine. Should work. Okay, so the answer is chemistry. Chemistry, let's see if it's gonna let me write. Oh, it is, but it's over. I write here and it shows up there. Oh, that's gonna be very confusing. C H E M I N. Oh, that looks so terrible. Can you read it? Chemistry is the study of substances and the changes they undergo. So now you know. I might have to put a work order for that. That's pretty terrible. All right, there's two. Well, so what we're going to talk about is measurements of chemistry, and there are types of chemistry measurements. Um, one is qualitative, and one is quantitative. Does anybody know the difference in those two things, qualitative and quantitative? What do you think, Jeff? Uh, qualitative is based off of the degree of like if you have something poor versus good. Okay. Quantitative is numbers. Numbers. So quantity means numbers, right? The quantity of something. So the so qualitative is the qual is given the answer in a non-numeric way. So when we said our water was flammable, that would have been a qualitative thing. Oh, this is crazy. Okay, I can't do this. <laughs> I can't write in one place and it show up in somewhere else. So so we're gonna have to do something else. Hold on. Don't worry. I have a plan B. Look. Already filled in from last year. All right, so we're going to just have to go from there. Now, y'all can't cheat, though, and just start writing everything down. You got to wait till I tell you, all right? Okay, so qualitative gives the result in a non-numeric way. For example, red. Red would be a way to describe something that would be its qualitative. Quantitative gives the result in a definite, definite form, usually numbers, like three centimeters. Now, good measurements, accuracy and precision are not the same thing. So I'm gonna block it so you can't see it. What's the difference in accuracy and precision, do you think? Anybody got a guess? The difference in accuracy and precision? Close, what else? What do you got, Max? Accuracy is close to the center, precision is close to other results. Yes. Precision, 
is how finely stated it is or how close it is to other results. Um, accuracy is how close it is to the truth. So accuracy, how close the measurement is to the truth. Precision, how finely, how close several measurements are to the same value or how finely stated it is. So here where we have all the arrows hitting close together, it's precise. It's not accurate. I didn't hit the bullseye, but it's precise. I kept hitting the same place over and over again wrong. Sort of like how this board does, writing over and over again the same place wrong. Um, this one is neither accurate nor precise. There was one that was accurate, but they're all over the place, so it's neither accurate nor precise. The last one is accurate and precise. It's hitting in the middle over and over again. And in science, we want measurements that are both accurate and precise. Any questions about that? That all makes sense? Okay. Um, next thing, expressing measurements. So in science, we express things a little different. And I'm going to come over here to roll it up because my smart board's acting weird. So I'm going to roll here. Can I go all the way up? Are we good with that? Let me know. No, too, too fast. Go back down a little bit. Like where? Right there, is that good? Okay. All right, so we're gonna express measurements in something called scientific notation. It's a way to write really big and really small numbers. Why? It's easier and because of our calculators. Our calculators can do math on bigger and smaller numbers than the display screen can show, okay? It can do math of bigger and smaller numbers than the display screen sh can show. So this is a way to communicate with our, our um, calculators um, in a sort of a shorthand. And that's why you have to have a scientific calculator for this class, as we will be using scientific notation, and you have to have a calculator that can do it. What you're looking for is a button on a Texas instrument that says capital E, capital E. If you have a graphing calculator, it's the second of the comma um, behind the seven. So if you have your calculators right now, get them out, because we'll practice putting some numbers in as we're learning this next idea. Now, tomorrow, during your lab safety test, I'm going to come around if you got a graphing calculator, a TI, 82, 83, or 84, and I'll give you programs. If a math teacher makes you delete the programs for like a test or something, don't worry, I'll give them to you again. Don't cry and don't pitch a fit, just know I can give them to you again. All right, so um, graphing calculator. All right, so this is how it works. This is the etiquette of scientific notation. The etiquette is, is you have a non-zero number represented by an X here, a decimal point, other non-zero numbers, and then, now this is something that kind of contradicts what I always teach kids in math. When I start teaching kids pre-algebra in eighth grade, I tell them that an X does not mean times anymore, that we use a dot, or we use parentheses, or we use a number sitting next to a letter. All of those things mean multiply in algebra, right? And so that's one of the things, you know, we can't use X anymore for times because X is an X. Now it's an unknown variable. Everybody remembers that little talk from Algebra 1 or Pre-Algebra? Okay. This is the one place where we break that rule. It's in scientific notation because you do your first non-zero number, a decimal point, the other non-zero numbers, then it's an X that means times 10 to an exponent. Have y'all all learned this in your previous life before somewhere? No? A little bit? Okay. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. I was telling Miss Corn that we start with this, and she was like, they've already learned this, but I always find that somehow you have it. Not, I think a lot of times with math that it's hard to learn it until you really use it. So, like, the way they teach seventh graders to balance their checkbook, I think it's just dumb because seventh graders don't have checkbooks and don't need to know how to balance them or interest rate for seventh graders. Move it to high school where you might actually use it. All right, so here is an example. We have a number, one, two, three, zero, 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 zero. 
what you do is you take the decimal point. Now, I pretend that the, it's not going to let me do it. I pretend that the decimal point is a frog because it's more fun. And you count how many times he jumps to get into his place. And his proper place is behind the first non-zero number. So let's count together our frog jumps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it's getting all crazy. Ten. Does everybody understand how it's ten frog jumps for the decimal point to go from where it started to its proper place for scientific notation? Does that make sense to you? I don't know why that's doing that. Get off of there. Okay. Does that make sense how it's ten jumps? Everybody good there? So this number is 1.23 times ten by the number of jumps, and it's ten. Ten jumps. You understand that? Okay. Now, let's do this one. This is a very small number. So the number is 0 0.00000123. The decimal point has to jump to its proper place behind the first non-zero number. So let's count how many places it is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Does everybody understand how it's 6? Even though there's five zeros, it's six because it has to jump over the one to get into its proper place. Good? Okay, mm -hmm. so this number is 1.23 times 10 to the negative six. If it's a very, very big number, the exponent is positive. If it's a very, very small number, less than zero, then it's a negative number. Okay. All right, now, Let's put them in our calculator. Everybody get out your calculator and we're gonna put in this number, okay? So I'm gonna go through the, oh, the TI-84 and then we'll talk about it, um, it, cause it's pretty much the same for all the TIs, okay? We'll just be wherever your EE button is. Everybody find your EE button. It might be EXP, it might be SCI if you have a, cal a Casio. But if you have a TI, it should be EE. Everybody found your button? Okay, so we're gonna put in this number is one, my decimal point's right down here, you need to find your decimal point, 1.23. Now for this one, because the EE is painted on the calculator, I push second comma, and it gives me a little E, a little letter E. Did you get a little letter E? That letter E stands for times 10. When calculators were new, they could not do an X. They could only do things on the grid of an eight. So they decided, hey, we can make an E and it can stand for times 10. So I have 1.23 E, which means times 10. We do not hit times, we do not hit 10, we hit E, E that means times 10. Are we good with that idea? That's where people always mess up. Okay, and now we give it the exponent and our exponent is 10. We say 10 and that's, so how the number's gonna look is 1.23, little bitty capital E, big 10. You do not use your up arrow. You do not put it in exponent land. It is written um, where it was and I graphed it on accident. Ooh, look how lovely that is. Okay, let's go back to the screen. All right, now hit enter. Now, with some calculators, if it can show it on the screen and not scientific notation, it will take it out when you hit enter. All right, now, if you don't have this calculator or, or one of the newer ones, then your button EE might not have to hit second first. Okay, you just hit EE. If it's painted on the top of the buttons, you hit that button. Any questions about how to put this in your calculator? Don't be shy. If you have no idea how to get that number in your calculator, you're going to need that for your test Friday. So make sure you know how to do it and for your homework before that. All right, so let's try the other one. Everybody put this one in your calculator. So we're gonna try again 1.23 EE, however you get to it. And this time you hit negative six. Now on this calculator, negative is on the bottom. And this is, so hit negative, not minus, negative negative six, and then hit enter, and it might take it out of scientific notation. Did it for anybody? 
Yeah, the TI is done. The LTI uh, 23s used to, yes. It's the same, right. The, some of the ones that aren't 84s, 80, 82, 83, 84s, will switch it back and forth for you. These won't. It's one of the things they don't do. Any questions about that? And if you don't understand, you're too shy to ask, especially because your question will be on YouTube. Uh, just let me know, and I will, I'll work with you. I'll show you how to do it. You're going to have a homework sheet tonight that will use some math. So, All right, let's, oops, let's go here and move on up. Okay, so a big number is positive. A little number is negative. And then on our calculators, the buttons can either be EE, -E, EXP, SCI, or times 10. There's buttons that say times 10. So if you didn't have EE, -E, look for one of those. E means times 10. So when it says E on your calculator, that's the times 10. So now let's try this one. See if you can put this one by yourself in the calculator. 36000. Zero, zero, zero. Cover up the answer. Right? Every time I touch this thing, it goes nuts. Let me fix it over here. New board, new room. Got to get work the kinks out. Okay, there we go. Please pardon the interruption. If you are the driver of a black Highlander parked at the Auxiliary Jam, check number RTQ 1010. It is the Georgia license plate. If you are that uh, vehicle owner, please go and move your vehicle at this time. Thank you. <laughs> it's in the way. None of y'all parked illegally. Okay, good. All right. So, did you get it? 3.6 times 10 to the fourth. And it would be 3.6 E4. Did you get that one? Now try 200. How would 200 be in scientific notation? See if you can put it in scientific notation and into your calculator. Everybody give it a try. It should be, because you move your decimal point two places, it should be 2 times 10 to the second power. And uh, on your calculator, it should say 2E2. 2E2. Now, I think it's ridiculous to put a number like 200 into scientific notation. It takes something we understand and put it into something we don't understand. But the physics book that I taught out of, and I think the physics book that you people will have your class based on next year does this. Drives me crazy. They make it extra hard for no reason. Okay, so now try this one. 0.00000033. And also try 0 .004. See if you can put those in your calculator. See if you can write them in scientific notation without me. See if you can do it. I think you can. Okay. So this one should be 3.3 .3 times 10 to the negative 7th. I touched it again. Stop it. I don't think I did. I think I just got close to it. And this one should be 4 times 10 to the negative 3, which the display would be 4E negative 3. Are y'all getting them? Okay, next, I want you to do it on your calculator and divide them and see what you get. Do, don't do these numbers, do your scientific notation ones. Do 3.3 uh, times 10 to the negative 7th divided by 4 times 10 to the negative 3rd on your calculator and see if you can get the right answer. Everybody try that on your calculator. Now, does your phone have where it can do scientific notation? It does. If you've got it, your calculator on your phone like this and you turn it like that, it will do it, but it does it differently and you're not allowed to use your phone on the SAT, the ACT, or my test. So I don't want you to ever use your phone because you'll be learning it the wrong way. I'd rather you not do it at all than do it on your phone. You got to do it on a scientific calculator because it's different. It will give you the wrong answer if you do it the right way. Okay. All right. Next idea. Did y'all get for your answer 8.25 times 10 to the negative fifth? Yay! Anybody not get that? 8.25 times 10 to the negative fifth? All right. It changed it out of scientific notation when it gave you the answer? No, it's, it's still in scientific notation. Okay, but it gave you 8.25 times 10 to the negative fifth? Yes. Good. All right. And some calculators will take it out of scientific notation. If it can display it, 
It does. So you just, you learn your calculator and you'll do fine. All right, so the next idea is significant figures or significant digits, or as the cool kids call it, sig figs or sig digs. Because you know, we're cool in science and math. We're known for our coolness, right? <laughs> sure we are. You always hear the math nerds are the cool ones, right? Okay, so um, this is the thing. As scientists, we have to be honest. We want to be honest scientists. And one way to be dishonest is making it look like you have better lab equipment than you do. I have a little balance that looks like that, a little electric balance that you'll use in here that only measures to the tenths and it doesn't even measure exactly to the tenths it goes it'll go it only does by two tenths it will measure 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 0 0.8 is all it'll do for fineness i have another one back there that i'll let y'all use later for a lab that measures to three decimal places or four it's called an analytical balance and it's so fancy that it can feel the wind move by it and measure it. So it has to be in this little glass box to protect it from the wind so that it can measure correctly. Which one do you think is more expensive? The one that has to be in a box. The one that has to be in a box. This one costs thousands of dollars. And this one costs tens of dollars. Ten dollars, to be exact. One ten. So I can, if I was to do math where sometimes on your calculator, it will give you a bunch of decimal places, right? Like if you do one divided by three, you get point three, 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 three. Everybody understand this on your calculator, correct? If I wrote down all those threes, I would, and I had used this little cheapo balance, that would be dishonest. It would make it look like I had a better balance than I did and that my data was better than it was. Can you imagine how this is a way of lying? It's lying about how expensive your lab equipment is, okay? So there's rules of rounding in science. Where, how many of these decimals are you allowed to write down, okay? And it is called significant figures or significant digits, AKA how far to round, all right? So, um, first of all, the first rule is how to round in general. If you have a number and you're going to round it, five and up rounds up, less than five rounds down. Do you understand what I'm saying? Y'all learned that before? Like if you had a number that was 6.25, but I can only report it to one decimal place because of my cheap balance, then this is a five, so it's gonna cause that two to go up, and it will be 6.3 that I write down. If it had been 6.24, four is not strong enough to round up two, so I would report my answer is 6.2. Does that make sense now? Okay, so there used to be different rules in science with rounding than what you learned in elementary school. And it had to do with odd and even. As far as I can tell by reading the college textbooks when I, when I tutor college kids, is they have changed that rule. And they are letting the science rule be the same as the rule, that rule that you learned in elementary school. So if you, there you ever hear a different rule, just know it used to have a different rule. And it was, fives were based on the numbers around it being even or odd. But you don't need to know that, so wipe it out of your head. Okay, so the next thing about, let me wrap, let me go over here and roll this up. Doing great so far, good job guys. Okay, the next thing is, there is a math curriculum out there that teaches this wrong. It's called ABECA. If you've been in private school or home school, you might have used it. There might be other math curriculums that teach this next idea wrong. So just know if you used one of those in your life, pay attention. Okay, but pay attention anyway. Okay, if you have a giant number and you're supposed to round it. So I'm going to do 17.654. Five, two, nine, one. Okay? Big old number like this. And I am supposed to round it to one decimal point. 
Does everybody understand the assignment? What you do is you only look at the number next to it to decide if it rounds up or down. All of this doesn't matter. You only look at the five and the five would round the six up to a seven. What the, those curriculums teach wrong is they say you start here. The one leaves the nine alone. The nine rounds the two to a three. The three leaves the five alone. The five rounds the four to a five. The, the five rounds the five to a six. The six rounds the six to a seven. That example ended up the same, but it doesn't always. In reality, this number is so small. This is, you know, remember this is a tenth, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millionths, ten millionth. Everybody understand what I just did? This ten millionth is way too small to have any impact on a great big tenth. A tenth is such a bigger fraction than a ten millionth that that ten millionth can have no impact on the tenth. Does that make sense to you? Anybody ever had that taught to you wrong? To start at the end? You don't start at the end. You start at the number next to it. So one time I was tutoring in the library, Dallas, you know, by Sarah Babb, and I was at that big table at the Young Adult Fiction, and I was explaining this to a student, and there was this kid poking through, like, you know, the Hunger Games, who said, I was taught that way, and they were like, oh, I was taught wrong, so I was drawing people in through the Young Adult Fiction to learn this math idea, so um, it's out there, so we want to make sure it's right. Okay, why? We want to be honest scientists and not make our data look better than it really is. Do your math using all the digits you have, and then you round at the very end. So you don't worry about scientific notation. You put in all the digits you have, and then you round at the very end. Any question about that? Otherwise, you will not get the right answer. And there is a math curriculum that does this wrong. Uh, the, there is a math book out there now, not a Becca. It's used in public school. It's... Um, uh, McDougal Littell does this wrong. Whoever wrote the book was new math but not science. See, I know both. And it's so frustrating because they don't know where to round their answers. They've never learned this. All right, I'm rolling up. That's okay. Okay, now there are different rules for addition and subtraction and multiplication and division. You knew this was going to be a mathy class when the first thing I told you was get a calculator, right? All right, so the first thing, which is great, because math is great. That's my catchphrase on YouTube. In all my videos, I end with math is great, and I start with welcome, welcome, welcome. So math is great. Okay, addition and subtraction, all the math ones I do. Round your answer to the same number of decimal places and the number with the least decimal places. And this will make more sense when we do a worksheet on it. Okay, so whichever number has the least decimal places is your weakest number, your answer cannot have more decimal places than your weakest number. Does that make sense? If it's adding and subtracting, you go with the least decimal places. With multiplication and division, you round your answer so that your answer has the same number of significant figures as your number with the least number of significant figures. Now, what are significant figures? You have to learn whether numbers are significant or not by a system of rules, okay? So these are, you must follow the rules, and these are the rules. We're going to practice this until it makes sense to you. The first rule is all non-zero digits are significant. So if I have this number, 123.45, it has five significant figures because it has five non-zero numbers. How are we feeling? Okay, so far. Rule number two. So really, this is about whether or not zeros are significant. Rule number two, zeros between non-zero digits are significant. So if I have the number 102, that zero is between non-zeros. One is a non-zero, two is a non-zero. So, so that zero counts, it's significant, and 102 has three significant figures. All right, so far? Nobody's crying, no one's got a rash. I think we're doing good. No one's run screaming from the room. I have had violent reactions to math before. Y'all seem to be handling it just fine. Okay, here's our next one. 
Zeros that start a number with a decimal are not significant. So this number right here, 0 0.002, none of those zeros count because they're at the beginning of a number. So it only has one significant figure. The only number that counts is the two. Does that one make sense? Okay, let's do the next one. Zeros at the end of a number after a decimal are significant. So 21.3000, those zeros are at the end of a number after a decimal. They're significant, so it has six significant figures. All right, so far? Yes, Max? How are those zeros significant? Because they are at the end of a number after a decimal. One's at the beginning of a number? No. One's at the end after a decimal? Yes. They were measured. They just were measured to be zero. They measured it that far. My electronic balance really did weigh this to be 21.3000 grams. It measured those to be zero. Zero can be the answer. Like you can be 10 feet tall and that zero at the end of 10 is significant. You're not one foot tall, you're 10 feet tall. You measured yourself to be 10 foot tall. Measurements can end in zero. Does that one make sense? Okay, next one, because <laughs> now it's gonna get worse. A zero at the end of a number with no decimal point is not significant. It was not measured. <clears throat> so 4,200 has no decimal point. Those zeros don't count. They weren't really measured. Our instrument couldn't measure that finely to measure ones or tens. Our instrument could only measure hundreds. Like maybe the scale at the dump. You ever taken a truckload of stuff to the dump? I bet that's not a super fine scale, don't you? Couldn't you even maybe imagine that that scale only goes to the 100 pounds and not to the one or the 10 pounds? I, I would think that because you drive on there and they tell you how much to pay. But what if you were fat or thin? Does the fat person who drove the truck on the scale have to pay more than the th thin person? I'm thinking not. I'm thinking it only measures maybe to the hundreds. So, but maybe so. Maybe you need your thin friend to go drive the truck to the dump. Get everybody out of the trunk, truck while it's on the scales. It stinks up there. All right. Back on task. Okay, so 4,200 only has two significant figures because those zeros are at the end of the number with no decimal point. How do we feel about that? Okay? Okay, let's keep going. Don't worry. Once you practice it, it will be easy. And here's our cool kid saying sig figs because he's all cool, not saying significant figures. And the reason why I tell you that is because if you always say significant figures or significant digits, you'll get to college and they always say sig figs and sig digs and you'll be like, what are they talking about? Now you know what they're talking about. It's not really cool people, it's nerds. It's we science nerds. We're the ones who say sig figs. Okay, change between measurements. Dimensional analysis. Just think of how fun it will be to go home and tell your mom what you learned today. I learned about significant figures. I learned about dimensional analysis. It sounds like you're part of the multiverse or something. Okay, changing between measurements. It's called factor label or dimensional analysis, which I think dimensional analysis sounds cooler. And it's based on this idea that you can convert measurements if you have, if you multiply it by one. Because multiplying by one does not change the value of a number, right? 32 times one is 32. A billion times one is a billion, right? So multiplying by one does not change the value. That's the first idea. Second idea is anything divided by itself is one, right? Five divided by five is one. So if I divide two things that are equivalent, it's equal to one. So if I divide 12 inches by one foot, that is, they are the same thing, 12 inches and one foot. Did y'all learn that in elementary school? Stop, kaput, 12 inches in a foot. Did y'all learn that? Stop, that's sign language for stop. Stop, kaput, 12 inches in a foot. It was a little first grade thing so that you could learn that. Anyway, if you didn't learn that, you can learn it now. Go ahead, I wouldn't mind. Okay, so conversion factors are things that equal one because it's something divided by itself. For example, one meter is 100 centimeters. They're the same thing. Seven days is one week. They're the same thing. 12 inches is one foot. Stop, kaput. Uh, they're the same thing, right? So I could take something 
and I could <clears throat> divide it by using conversion factors and I can change the unit. Now this looks terrible and I would be writing this myself if my board wasn't acting weird. Thought I had it fixed, so you're just gonna have to learn from last year. Last time, it was 41 days to fall break when we did this. Is it further than 41 days? That sounds about right, doesn't it? Fall breaks in 41 days or so, we'll pretend like it is. We wanna know how many seconds it is. First, you write down what you're given, which I call what you know. And I do like this. What do you write down first? I say what you, and you all say no. So let's practice that. What, what do you write down first? What you know. Very good. We will do this over and over again throughout this class. So first, we know 41 days. Then you write the unit of what you know in the denominator. Now, to multiply these, we use train tracks. Meaning, we are going to draw, and I drew this terrible, where you're going to do it neat. You're going to draw a line to represent the fraction bar. You're going to draw straight lines going down to represent parentheses. The reason why we don't use real parentheses is kids write so messy, those parentheses will turn into sixes and you get the wrong answer. So I've done this for decades. We don't talk about how many. And this is where I see you mess up, so we use this, this method instead. So you write the unit of what you know on the bottom, and then you write what you can you know to convert it to on top. Now, I don't know how many seconds are in a day, but I do know how many hours are in a day, and the relationship is one day is 24 hours. Everybody understand how I got that? The days cancel out, because in math, if you have the same thing in the numerator and denominator, they cancel out. Not the numbers, but the units cancel out. Does that make sense? Okay, now I was supposed to get seconds. I have hours, so I gotta do some more converting. I write the unit that I have in the denominator, and then I think of a, of a, um, a conversion, and I don't know how many seconds are in an hour. Last semester, Hannah Davis did. I think it was her. She just rattled it off. I don't know that, so we're going with my knowledge, not Hannah Davis's. But if you did, you could go ahead and convert it here. So I put one hour on bottom, and I know there's 60 minutes in an hour. The hours cancel out, and now I have minutes. And now finally, I put minutes in the denominator, seconds in the numerator, because I know there's 60 seconds in one minute. Minutes cancel out, hours cancel out, days cancel out. You multiply anything in the numerator, divide anything in the denominator. Let's do it together on your calculators. Put in 41 times 24 times 60 times 60 enter and then divided by one you don't really have to do the divide by ones but we'll do it just for practice you multiply all the top and then you start doing the bottom and you would actually do, do divide by one enter divided by one enter divided by one if these were not ones if they're ones you can skip them and you should get 35,000 no 354,000 no more than three million five hundred and forty two thousand four hundred seconds and we didn't worry about significant figures there you don't worry about significant figures in some definite measurements and we'll talk about that more did you get it did you get the right answer yep all right now um you can try how many centimeters and four feet on your own we do feet and then we switch to inches and then the conversion factor between inches and feet is there are two point and inches and centimeters is there's 2.54 centimeters in an inch so feet cancel out inches cancel out and you're left with centimeters but you can figure that one out yourself This is making great YouTube. Should I pause it? It's going to be a pain though.
allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.